Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Coach Josh here with another Daily Plays with Coach Josh. want to welcome you guys out uh, to my Facebook Live, my YouTube channel, my podcast. Um, I wasn't planning on doing one this morning because I have a podcast to do later. And I wanted to kind of, you know, just get my thoughts around that together. Um, but as I was driving to work, I felt um, the word order hit my heart very heavy. Um, and so I wanted to share with you guys. So if you're watching this on Facebook Live, do me a big favor and share this out with all your friends. Uh, share it out with all your family members and all that good stuff. Watch it on YouTube. Share. And I also want you guys to comment uh, the areas that you plan on getting in order on this video. Um, and for those listening on the podcast, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, but let's get right into it. Um, the first scripture that comes to mind when it when the word order hit my heart was, I believe I wrote it down, 1 Corinthians 14, 40, where the Bible reads, and, but, but all things should be done in decency and in order. Um, God is a God of order. God desires for his people to walk orderly. Um, but the problem in our world today is that there's a lot of believers and people, period, who live more in disorder than they do in order. And 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 but in that disorder, they have the audacity to ask God uh, for certain things that are only designated for those who live an orderly life. An orderly life is not a life that's based upon uh, um, works righteousness or, or perfection. It's basically a life that is in love with the idea and the implementation of a obedience that that order like a order of life is a life that says god i'm only going to move on the beat of your drum i'm only going to move how you want me to move that that i i'm cognizantly aware of 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 my life and the way i'm living so that when i do things on behalf of god i do things in order the best way to do things in order or to live your life orderly is to always acknowledge god trust in the lord with all your heart lean not into your own understandings but in all your ways acknowledge Acknowledge him and he would direct your paths. A lot of us are walking on crooked paths or have taken or have taken early exits and we wonder why we never reach our destination. We first, in order for me to have an orderly life, I must trust. The reason why people don't really follow through with God because they don't trust him. How can you trust a person you don't know? So the enemy's ultimate objective is to get you not to get to know God because the more you get to know him as Lord, a person who governs one life, a one who's responsible for one's resources, when you begin to understand that he's Lord, you will begin to trust him more. You will begin to see the manifestation of faith you will begin to see the, the invisible hand of God in your life and that will build a natural longingness, a natural um, willingness and openness to actually obey. Trust in the Lord, one who governs my life. I must trust in him and I must not lean. Lean means rest over. Lean means to say I'm going to put all of my body weight against something that I know that will hold me. So many of us are leaning up, up against paper and not against brick walls. God God is a brick wall. Every other ideology, perspective, or thought is paper. Many of us are leaning and we wonder why we hit the ground so hard is because we're leaning on our own understandings. God says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So if you think, if you, if the bulk of your life is thinking on this level and, 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 and acting on this level, you're going to always find yourself falling into situation. That's why we have to trust in the Lord with uh, and trust in the Lord with all of our hearts, not just some, all of our hearts and leaning not into our own understandings, but in all, and then say some, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. Now I have some points real quickly that I want to kind of elaborate before I get off of here. Um, now how do we get into disorder or how do we uh, see death in our life? Death, um, it, even if you hear in the Bible, even with Adam and Eve, they didn't die, but they had a spiritual death. And the enemy's ultimate objective is for there to be death in our life, uh, not just physical, the goal is physical death, but but spiritual, emotional, and mental death. Now, how does this happen? How do we have a disorder life? First off, we have to understand that the enemy's ultimate objective is to debate debate. When you look at Adam and Eve, what did he do? He debated. Um, I look, I break the word debate down, not necessarily the word D, but I, I changed the letters. Debate, like debate, B-A-I-T. His goal is to debate you, to get you, to bait you into a conversation of deception, to bait you into a situation where you dialoguing with him. And that's why I say, do not dialogue with the enemy that's already been defeated. Don't dialogue. You, you, you determine, you determine his destiny. That's why I don't 
dialogue with the devil. I don't go back and forth. Even with people who got demons in them, you don't debate them. You don't dialogue with them because their ultimate objective is to bait you in into a place, next point, of distraction. They want to debate you or bait you in to a place of distraction that you begin to live your life confused. The God is the author of confusion. He's the author of clarity. So you have to make sure that you're not being baited in into a distraction that's going to build the third D, a desire. A desire to pursue debate, uh, like a like a, a a mouse or a rat. They a person knows a mouse trap is a trap that's designed for the mouse. Each and every one of us have a trap designed specifically for us to lure us to build a natural desire for something that's going to damage us. He knows what you like. So what I got to do is, if you like cheese, I put a cheese in a trap. If you like um, um, women, I put women in a trap. If you like men, I put men in a trap. Anything you like more or love more than God can be or will be used as a piece inside of a trap to lure you in. So he debates you into the distracted, uh, distracted uh, pursuit. Build desire, which leads to disobedience. Once you are in disobedience, you are now being distant from God. Disobedience immediately. The moment you disobey God, immediately you become a, a distance between you and him in that specific area. God wants obedience. The devil wants disobedience. And that disobedience leads to a disorderly life. That now you're just living off of your own merit. You're living off of your own ambition. You're living off of your own desire. You're in complete disobedience. And the sad thing is, is that a lot of people are in disobedience due to ignorance. That's why you got to build your intelligence, build your mindset on how God wants you to move so that you can walk more in obedience because the more you walk in obedience, the more your life comes into order. First Corinthians says, but all things should be done in decency and order. Decency means a way of character, a way of life, a way of thinking, a way of care, a way of management, that everything should be done in decency with respect and dignity and in order. He debates you. He baits you in to being distracted. Distraction then leads to desire being built, a carnal desire, which then leads into disobedience. And that disobedience causes a gulf between you and God is in that area and begins to build a distance. And that disobedient mindset will build a disorderly life. And that disorderly life will end up into a spiritual, mental, emotional, physical death or the death to your family, the death to your ministry, the death to your business, the death to anything because you are in disorder. Now, my acronym is life. How to get your life in order. First off, we got to understand order. Order is a, a, is a, a series of steps. Order is a series of, 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 of habits. Order is a way of life. And I have these things here that uh, getting your life in order is your responsibility. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be imparted in your life. Christ's spirit is supposed to be in your life to kind of point you into obedience, to point you to Christ, to the imagery and the and the ideologies and the, and the intelligence of Christ. Because if you have the intelligence of Christ and the Christ mind, you will begin to move like Christ would move in your specific situation. So many people, when they think of order, they think of of militant. They but but order means that that first off is my responsibility to get my life in order. But in order for me to get my life in order, I have to have knowledge. I have to have knowledge of the ultimate order, not the new order, but the order of orders. And when you understand that things are in seasons and things are have steps, then you will say, God, I will uh, see a lot of single people get upset with God because they're like, God is taking a long time. See, many people understand that God does things based upon his order and his timing. And a lot of single people are, are waiting. A lot of people who's, uh, in ministry and business are, are losing, are fainting, are losing strength because things are not happening in the order that they think it should happen. See, 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 so you can't get so caught up on how things should happen based upon the order you would like it to. Everything's based upon God's order. And when you understand that, you will say, God, take however long. Because with God, you can't skip steps. You skip step two, God's going to bring you right back to two. It doesn't matter how far you get to 10. It doesn't matter if you're on level eight. God will bring your behind all the way back to two. When you skip steps, God will skip to your loo all the way back to where you skipped. God saying you can't expect to be on level seven skipping. Excuse me. You can't expect to be on level seven skipping level two. 
Things are in order. Get your life in order. Get your mind in order. Get your get your things in order. And you will begin to see that man of God, that woman of God, that, that financial provision. You'll begin to see things happen. But if you're not in the word of God, if you're not disciplined in spiritual things, these things will not come in order. Now, life, L-I-F-E. And I have an acronym for life that I did years ago. This doesn't have anything to do with this. But life is living, uh, um, living life. What's my acronym for life? Um, I forgot what life meant. Uh, live it for eternity. Life. Live it for eternity. If you want to see a great life here, live it for eternity. Live it with eternity in mind. But that's another <clears throat> acronym for another time. But life. L-I-F-E. Number one. L. Get your lifestyle in order. If you want to see things fall in order in your life, get your lifestyle in order. What style of life are you living? Are you living a style of life that's contrary to what the word of God says? Are you living a style of life that's contrary to what God will want you to live? See, people got all these ideas about the Bible. That's why you cannot argue with me about the word of God if you haven't consulted the, 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 the logical truthfulness of the word being infallible. If person hasn't done a research about the word of God, haven't done a research about, 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 about God himself, I don't pay that much attention to him because you haven't done your due diligence. That's why I encourage all you guys to do your due diligence to find out why the word of God is true. Because when you find truth, truth will set you free and that freedom of life will then dictate the style of life that you should live and you will begin to see the beauty of living that life the way God wants you to live. The best way... To, to do it. In order to live your life, in order, you have to check your lifestyle. Am I lustful? Am I prideful? Am I egotistical? Am I lazy? Am I, procrasti am I a procrastinator? What kind of life are you living? I want you to get a sheet of paper and write down your lifestyle. What style of life do you live as a man? What style of life do you live as a woman? Write it down. So you can say, man, my life does not match God. My life does not match the word of God. You got to get your life in order. It's your responsibility to say, I'm going to choose this style of life. I'm going to have a loving life, a joyful life, a kind life, a patient life, a meek life, a gentle life, a kind life, a self-controlled life. I'm going to choose this style of life. You can't be lazy with your style of life. You got to say, God, I'm going to live life the way you like. God, you say you would give me life and life more abundantly. People think abundant life means, well, God's going to give me a bunch of money. No, 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 no. He wants to give you the way of life that you're supposed to live. That's why I read a gospel a month. That's why I'm in the word to find out how did Jesus live? If the Holy Spirit wants to point me to Jesus, <clears throat> then I got to say, how did he live? How do he handle the woman when he was caught in the act of adultery? How do he handle the Pharisees? How do he handle the, com the, the compassion that he had for people? How do he handle the zeal that he had for the house of God? How did he handle it? That's the style of life I want to live. Number two, I have to get my intelligence in order. Not only do I need to get my style of life in order, I gotta have I gotta get my intelligence in order. Intelligence. I gotta get my mind in order. We think poorly, we think disorderly. How can you walk in order if you think in disorder? How can you walk faithful if you have a faithlessness in your mindset? You got to choose to say, I'm going to have the intelligence of Christ. I'm going to get my thinking in order. Your life is a direct reflection of your thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the heart and the mind flows the issues of life. Now, you got to get your thinking in order. How do you think today? If you was to write on a sheet of paper all of your thoughts, and I want you to do that. I want you to write down the style of life you have, and I want to write down, I want you to write down before you go to bed tonight, all the more, all the prominent suggestive thoughts you thought today. And then when you look at those thoughts, you will see the kind of life you live in. How's your intelligence? Right now, you have access to the mind of Christ, those who are believe, those who believe in Christ and who are saved. Right now, you have the mind of Christ, that you have the access to the intelligence of God, that you have the ability to think as Christ would think in your specific situation, that right now, the Christ mind has no respect of life. So right now, you have the ability to think how Christ would think. You have the ability to think in this moment, but we don't take the time to take a moment. <clears throat> Our moments are wasted. You got to be able to take a break like Jesus did when a woman who was caught in active adultery. The Pharisees threw her before Jesus. 
The smell of sex was in the air. She was fighting to clothe her body. She was all of, she didn't have enough arms to cover herself. She was, was dirty. She smelt like sex and, and, and they threw her before Jesus. And Jesus, before he uttered a word, took a knee down and began to write in the dirt because that was a complicated situation because by Moses' law, she was supposed to be stoned. So he knew the formula and the equation that the Pharisees brought before him could have gotten him into the stoning himself. That if he didn't handle that situation with delicacy and with decency and with and with a unique order, he and her would have been stoned, right? Because he knew the emotions of the people were in a complicated situation because they had the weight of the Pharisee teaching on the left and the new weight of the teachings of Jesus He's going to the right. And he knew that if I didn't take a moment to sit down and to just take a moment to think about what I was going to say and to think about what I would do, because he said, I only do what I see my father do him and the woman would have got stoned. But he took a moment. We don't know what he wrote, but we know what he said. He without sin cast the first stone. If you just take a moment, everything you face right now, God will give you a moment to handle it. He'll give you a moment to say, just take five seconds to think about it. Take five minutes to tap into the Christ mind. Get your intelligence in an order about your situation. Whatever you're facing right now, there's an intelligence for it. Whatever you're going through right now, there's a wisdom for it. And if you want your life to get in order, get your intelligence in order. Number three, your faith. Your faith leads to your function. You got to get your faith in order. Everybody walks by faith. <clears throat> Everybody walks by faith. You have whatever you, your faith is evident in what you lean on for your provision and your sustainability. All of us walk by faith. The question is what kind of faith? You got to get your belief in order. You got to get your faith in order. The best way to get your faith in order is to go into the word of God. You got to build yourself up in your most holy faith. Your faith is a muscle. You got to work that thing. You got to exercise that thing. You got to get into your faith and say, God, I'm going to get my faith in order. I'm going to get my trust in order. I'm going to get my function in order. I'm going to get it all in order. My faith, because without it, no man can please God. You got to get your faith in order. How's your faith? Do you build your faith muscle? Last but not least, you're eating. You got to get your eating in order. Physical eating, emotional eating, mental eating, spiritual eating. You got to get your eating in order. In order for you to execute at a high level for God, in order for living your life, living it for eternity, in order for you to execute at a high level and to do exploits for God, you got to get your eating in order. You got to get your consumption in order. What are you consuming? Because what you eat is going to determine the energy you have and the energy you have is going to determine your execution. If I eat poorly, how can I expect myself to have a great source of energy? And if I don't have a great source of energy, how am I going to execute? If you're not eating properly spiritually, how are you going to have the spiritual energy to execute effectively with that energy? If you eat improperly physically, mentally and emotionally, you're consuming all these different things. Why would God want you to watch something that has heavy sexual innuendos? Why would God want you to consume things that have a lot of stuff that's an abomination to him? Because people think, well, this is just casual. This is just leisure. It doesn't affect me. Everything you allow to cross your eye gate and ear gate affects you. You got to get your lifestyle in order. You have to get your intelligence in order. You have to get your faith in order. And you got to get your eating in order. And when you begin to get these four things in order, and I'm sure there's other things that go with that. When you begin to get those four things in order, you will begin to see things become in order in your life. Your daily play for this for today is that I want you to write down a style of life that you live. Be honest. Nobody else is going to read it but you. Write down your style of life. What kind of life are you living? Number two, I want you to write down all of the thoughts you thought today, your intelligence. What did you think about today or think about the situation you was involved in and how and what type of intelligence did you operate in? I want you to write down all of the thoughts that you had today and I want you to look at those thoughts and see how it is affecting your life. I also want you to examine your faith on a sheet of paper. I want you to write down your, your why you don't have faith in God. What is causing your faith to fall? And last but not least, I want you to write down today all the things you ate. <clears throat> all the things you watched, all the things you listened to, all the food that you ate. Uh, I want you to write down the scriptures you read today because if you don't know how to eat the word of God, you ain't going to be able to know how to eat throughout life and have the energy for life and to execute in life. 
Got to go to work. Got to be in work in four minutes. I love you guys. I pray this quick message was a, was a, was a blessing. You can't skip steps with God. God is not going to give you step. God to give you favor. He'll have you skip steps as far as when it comes to <clears throat> favor. But when it comes to character and life, he ain't going to have you skip steps. Oh, man, you, listen, when you got the favor of God, you can skip college. You can skip college. You can skip certain things. And people be like, man, why are you so blessed? Why do you feel like you skip levels? Ain't nothing wrong with skipping levels when it comes to favor. But you can't skip stages when it comes to character. So uh, for those who watching on Facebook Live, share this broadcast. You're watching in the overflow called the, the replay, the overflow. If you're watching that, share the broadcast. Comment below what you plan on doing to get in order. If you want to write down some of your exercise in the comments below, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook Live and in SoundCloud or whatever, write down in the comments. I would love to see what you're getting from it. Links in the description box below um, for everything that I do, ministry-wise, um, uh, resource-wise, uh, books, games. Uh, if you want to give all that good stuff, description box below or in the comment section. I love you guys less, and I'm working on my life too. Every day, your life is your responsibility. The Lord, God is the Lord of your life, yes. But let the Lord lead you into life and in life abundantly. You choose how your life will be reflected today. Check your style of life. Check your intelligence. Check your faith and check your eating. And I promise you, if you get those things in order, you will see things fall in order in your life. Have a blessed day, guys. Peace.